Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the boost converter. So the boost converter does exactly what its name suggests. It converts energy um, from DC to DC and it boosts it up. So the output voltage in the boost converter is going to be greater than the input voltage. Uh, it basically is the opposite of the buck converter. Although the topology is actually reasonably quite similar. Um, we have a, uh, first of all we have our DC source and we bring it up and we bring that through an inductor. And then the output of that inductor is fed into a diode. And there is a switch here. So notice the um, slight change in the layout of the devices. The output of the uh, diode comes to a smoothing capacitor. And then the output of that goes off to our load. Here it is here. So if you just, we, we, we look at this and the first thing we can see is um, this is effectively low side switching of the inductor. Um, so our microcontroller could be installed here and it would be very easy to provide a 5 volt supply into there. So that's the first thing. These things are easier to build than the buck converter. Um, but they, they differ because their purpose is to take a low DC voltage and increase it. So basically our output voltage will be greater than our input voltage. That's the purpose of the of the boost converter. Now again with this uh, switching device here there are two conditions. The, this is either on or it is off. So if we look at the um, switching that we might have here we will come along and we will turn the device on. We will turn the device off. We turn it on like this. So here this is our switch on and off and the circuit works in two ways here um, in the on condition when switch one is on the circuit is extremely simple basically this MOSFET short circuits all of this and our circuit effectively becomes our inductor, our MOSFET, our DC supply, and that's it. Okay. That in the on when the switch is on, we effectively have a very low impedance path down through here, which effectively shorts all of this out and renders it useless for the purposes of the analysis of what's going on. So we have a current flow out of our battery like that. Um, and that, that's essentially what, what's going on. Uh, it's very straightforward. If what's happening here is the energy from our supply is being used and to charge our inductor. It is being charged up. When we turn the switch off, we our circuit looks quite different. We still have our inductor which is now full of energy. We come down through a diode to our load. And that becomes our circuit. So essentially what we now have is we now have our input voltage and the energy of the inductor being dumped into the load. So our output, what is being delivered through to here is the sum of this and this. Um, and as a result, the amount of uh, the voltage here that's been fed to this capacitor and the load is much greater than just what would be here, this battery supply alone. If we look at the currents that's flowing through this, um, the inductor current Depending on where it starts, excuse me. <coughs> depending on where it starts, we'll, we'll work. We'll start it here. It will rise as it is being charged up. When this switch is turned off, that current will then start to fall as it in, drains out of here. And this point down here will be the same, and it'll carry on rising like that. Um, from a calculation point of view, 
the average inductor current will be this point through here. Um, this does raise issues around what we call continuous mode and discontinuous mode, which I'll come back to in a minute. When we look at what's happening in the capacitor, it's the other way around. So our capacitor is normally considered to be like that. When the device is on, our capacitor is discharging into the load. So if this is a zero point here and we're looking at our capacitor, we will see that it is actually negative and it's like that. We end up with a waveform that looks like this. So here is our capacitor discharging into the um, discharging into our load, and here is our capacitor being recharged as the energy is being put through here. Um, and, and that's what we see going on. The, uh, the that should be I. Sorry, current in the capacitor. Um, this point here is often considered to be the IC. It's normally often drawn as a straight line, but in reality it's at a slight curve there. Uh, to calculate what these values will be, uh, it all really depends on the, um, the amount of ripple you want and the amount of ripple you're going to expect. So the value of capacitance here, uh, without going through all the maths and, and boring you with that, the capacitor will be the average current that you're going to be expecting out times the duty cycle over the period over the ripple. And the inductor is quite similar. The inductor is the input voltage times dt over two times the input current. Now, I mentioned earlier about discontinuous mode. Discontinuous mode is often considered to be when this charges up but it's turned off for either too long or the inductor is not large enough to handle the amount of current that's being delivered into it and this discharge rate carries on until it gets down to a zero point and then goes flat. Essentially you end up with a, a waveform that might look like this. And this is your on and this is your off. So the current for this period in time here is discontinuous, it is zero. And this might be desirable in certain applications, it might be undesirable. And there are a couple of ways of operating the buck converter in this discontinuous mode. As I said, the first one would be have a very low duty cycle. Yeah, I've drawn that completely the wrong way around. might be something like this we can see I mean this is not drawn to scale of course but this duty cycle is much less than the one that I've got drawn up here the other one would be to choose an inductor that is too small less than this value so if we chose if we put this value of inductor in here the circuit would be operating it perfectly so if we say the L the chosen capacitor equal this L that would be operating what's called the boundary condition mode if the chosen capacitor is less than what we calculate, um, that would give us what's called discontinuous mode, what I just described. And uh, if the chosen capacitor is greater than that, then that would give us continuous mode. And that, that's fine, this is what most people do. So if you get a calculation that comes out to be, say, 23 Henry's, then you'd stick a 50 Henry. Uh, if the calculation came out to be something like, say, 23 millihenries, then you'd stick a, a 50 millihenry inductor in there or something like that um, to, in, to ensure it doesn't move into this discontinuous mode. Um, the other thing, the final thing to note here, uh, now that we've explained it all and given the values for how to calculate it, of course, if you're gonna, this diode here has got to be able to big enough to handle the current through it. And similarly with this MOSFET here, it's got to be able to handle the voltage supply 
as well as the current through it. So I mean that's pretty straightforward. I don't have to go into any more detail there and insult your intelligence by doing that. Um, people the boost converter does not create energy. Just because you've got an output voltage that is bigger than your input voltage doesn't mean you get free electricity, like some people seem to think. You're still bounded by the basic laws of physics. The, you're going to have the power input to this device, which is obviously going to be the V in times the I in. You're going to have the output power, which will be your output voltage times your output current. And so if we double the output voltage, our, our, the current that we can draw out of it is going to be much less. Um, bear in mind here, here's our input power, which is our voltage and our current. Here's our output power. V out, I out. P in equals V in I in. So we are going to lose a little bit of energy through our inductor here because remember this is going to have a, a couple of milliohms. So we're going to lose a bit of power through here. We've got a 0 0.7 volt drop here nominally. So we're going to lose um, some power through here. So we lose power here. We lose power here. When the device is turned on, this has got a resistance between the drain and the source. So we lose a little bit of power here. So here are three losses that we're going to have in our boost converter. So if we put in, say, 100 watts here, we might lose, say, 5 watts here, which means the maximum we're going to get out is 95 watts here. So we are not creating energy. If we step up the voltage, we will step down the available current in the same way that a transistor, uh, the transformer does that sort of thing. So that's the, um, the basis of the boost converter. I hope it's all quite clear for you now. Um, they're very simple. They're quite easy to build. Um, they work really well. You can take what you can do is if you wanted is you can take a output off here, run it through a voltage divider and then feed it back into your control. And that way things will always give you a constant output voltage. Um, Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. We'll see you later.